In this video I will do a layout on the Tekenner custom UI framework. And I will discuss how to install and use this framework. And the first thing we will do is arrange the layout. And first we install it to completion. And we'll start coding. And let's get started. The first one I will import to Kinder and create a class. After that we will specify the width and height of the screen. And later there will be three layouts. Namely pack, place, and grid. Later we will try one by one. And here I will set the width and height of my application in the geometry section. And after that I will run this app with no daemon. To reload and resave automatically. And I will try and practice them one by one here. For the layout section. So we place the elements as we want. And here are some properties that you can use for the pack layout. Namely sides. To set the location location. Whether the element will be on the top, left, bottom or right of the application. And fill to fill in the blanks or available space. So it will immediately fill based on the width or height of the blank. And padding to adjust the vertical and horizontal spacing and expand to arrange the element in the parent element. And when I draw, then like this about the placement of elements in the application. You can set whether you want to place it on top, left, bottom, or right. You can adjust yourself. And now I'm going to create an element. Button for example. And I will rename it here as an example. And I will make that to be on the left side. Like this. And like this it will be. You can set whether the element is on the right, left, bottom, or top. And I will create some buttons. I will use all of them. And I will set it in all positions. And it will look like this. You can also set the padding. For horizontal and vertical. So you can use X for horizontal. Y for verticals. You can use the property fill both. To fill in all the empty space. Both horizontal and vertical. So our element will fill full width. And here are the results. Element will fill the available space. And you can use expand to take up all the space both width and height. And this is the result. And we will try the second type of layout. Namely grids. For grids, you can set it by following row and column. Which are available. So you just fill in how much for the row and how much for the column. And now, for all these buttons I will use grid layout. And just change the value in the row and column properties only. And now we will try. And now I'm going to change the row value and columns and to index starts from zero. 
so every first line and first column will always start with zero. And like that. For grid layouts. Later we proceed to the next layout, namely place. And for place layout. This will set the widget and determine its position relative to other widget elements. You will see some of these properties. And for rail width. And rail height. You can set the width and height. Your widgets. With non-decimal numbers. This will stretch and widen the size of your element. And for the anchor properties. You can place your element. Whether it will be in the south, north west and east positions and middle middle and i will give an example to use the x and y axes so the element will follow and will automatically be in the position we set and you can see its position will follow the axis we want And I will use the decimal version namely rel X and rel Y. So we can set position based on axis with decimal value. Actually the same as before. And I'm going to use the real width and rel height once. This will set the width and height of my element. So it will look wider and higher. And already seen. If our element will widen and rise here. And I will try another button element. And I will place it in another position too. And with a different axis. And that's about it. For this tutorial hopefully useful.